Wahoo, yee-hee, mamma mia. Yippee, yippee, and such. Guys, how you doing? Welcome. Hey, hey, how you doing? How you going? It's Mario it's time. Mario, yeah. Hey, Whoa. waha. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to our two day late Mario we're only two day days special. late. But what better place? Wh where would you rather be to celebrate? Uh, the, I made the, up the, corporate the, holiday from two days ago. <laughs> I'm just realizing that is going to block my camera. Okay. Uh, made up corporate holiday from two days ago. Mm -hmm. It's Mario Day because it spells Mario, March, yeah. March 10th. Nintendo did some stuff for Mario Day. Yeah. Uh, nothing too exciting. No, it was stuff we already knew about, really. Like, they didn't announce it. Well, they announced one thing. Mm -hmm. We kind of figured it would be coming. It's like not a Yeah, and it's like, it, no one knows that date's going to be real. Yeah. So. Also, they were still ambiguous on, like, what exactly they were announcing, in a way. I we'll got to be honest. Didn't really see it. I yeah. just skipped. I skipped through and I saw the date and then whatever. Yeah. We'll t we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, I I tweeted about some uh, ROM hacks and some special games yes. you could use. To, you could you could use to celebrate your Mario. Day. Yes, just as the good Lord Miyamoto intended. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so we'll get into that. There's other news that yes. we got to talk about this week. Uh, there was an Xbox partner showcase, believe it or not. Yeah, big, big whoa. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, we, we talked about it. We said it was. They, they we also, said it was coming. We said it was coming, and they said what games would be in it. They said some of the games that were going to be in it. They announced oh, okay. more games that were in it, and it was. They're not doing themselves any favors. No. Let's put it that way. No. Uh, big news with Apple versus Epic. We got to talk about. Yeah. The law again. Yeah. Uh, and some other mumbo jumbo. Yes. I am going to take this hat off because believe it or not, it is very small. <laughs> it's small. It yeah, is. it's sitting on top I of have, my head. I have a big head. Is this one bigger? Is it? Oh. Not, not that we have to wear them. I, yeah. I don't intend on wearing it. Yeah, this one's bigger. Look, give me that one. I want to I I feel the difference. We got a, we got a cappy hat and a yeah, regular Mario hat. Traditional hat. It feels fine. No, it's small. Yeah, exactly. Small. Yeah. All right. All right. No Mario today. Yeah. Fuck Mario. <laughs> uh, first, let's talk about. There's Nintendo Switch Online games. Yes. These this, were announced though. These during were the announced Mario Day. during uh, the Mario Day festivities, but they're available right now. Okay. So if you have a Switch Online subscription, you get Doctor Mario Woo! on Game Boy, and on Game Boy Color, Mario Tennis. And recent backlog entry, Mario Golf. I think during that backlog episode, we erroneously told people that it was on Nintendo Switch Online. I think we said the game, the N64 versions on Switch Online. Wait, what was? Why did we go away? Why did our camera go away? <laughs> what? What? Uh, what was the backlog for? It was it for the N64 version. It was for the N64 version, but we oh. had brought up the Game Boy version, the Game Boy Color version, because the Game Boy Color version uh, is an, a full-on RPG with right. golf, and okay. I found that interesting. Wanted to talk about it. Okay, the N64 version, you could have played it before. Yes, I want to play the Game Boy version. I and have I, it on a Game Boy. And now you can. <laughs> uh, now I yeah okay. Yeah. I have it on a Game Boy, but maybe I'll just play it on this. Yeah, it might be easier for me. No, I can, it'll be easier for me to play it on a Game Boy. Uh, what else? Also included. I gotta fix my camera. All right. Also included is Mario Tennis, a game I also hear is part RPG. Um, that's so that's cool. And Doctor Mario, the only game I have any real familiarity with. Uh, Doctor Mario, of course, is a weird puzzle game where you play a doctor who happens to be Mario, and you shove pills down a person's throat until they feel better. <laughs> Fun fact: I played a tournament with that game, and I got my ass kicked. Was I there for that? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah. Packs. Yes, I remember I remember that. Actually, didn't I do good in Dr. Mario? I mean, Dr. Mario's... Yeah, because that was the only game you could wrap your head around. The other games were like sports. Yeah, it was, du it was a dumb <laughs> tournament. It was an NES tournament. They did the worst games. Yeah. All right. Uh, but that... Uh, good games. Yeah. Good, good games. Good games. Sure. Good selection. People are mad that there's still no uh, Mario Land. Super Mario Land. I think oh, yeah. I, Super Mario Land 1 isn't on there. 2 it, is. It's strange that it's not there. Yeah. But, I mean, 
all of the Mario games should be there. Yes. Uh, it's less surprising to me because this game is not great. It's like maybe the worst Mario game, the worst 2D Mario game. It's, it's definitely the most like unique of it because it's so different from it's, like a traditional. T- it's oh, no, extremely then different. There's Mario 2. I don't count Mario 2. No? Well, which Mario 2? Doki Doki Panic. Doki Doki Panic, I don't count it. Like, at all. (laughs) Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't count. Um, Japanese Mario 2, um, that one's also weird and different. Yeah. But this one takes it to, like, the extreme. Like, uh, what is it? If you you jump on a Koopa, it explodes? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff. The physics are weird. Everything's weird It's got, you you can go on a spaceship and, like, do shmup levels. Yeah, there's, there's shmup levels. Yeah. Yeah, it's bizarre. Also, uh, was it Donkey Kong? Is not on here. This Donkey Kong game? No, that's not on here. No, and that's that's the one I like. That's the one I talk about all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. You you talk about that a lot. That's so. Wait, that is the arcade game, but then they added a bunch of levels. Correct. Okay. And that's what Mario versus Donkey Kong is. Yeah. Made after. Okay. So there you go. Get those are available now. So go get them. Uh, also, uh, oh yeah, they're today. They're available today. Yeah. Go, go, go get them. Folks. Go get them. All right. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the Mario Day news. Yeah. That happened. Uh, over the weekend, Ma- Nintendo celebrated its annual Mario Day celebration on March 10th. The celebration included a cornucopia of sales on Switch games and accessories, some of which you could still take advantage of. Um, and a few surprises announcements from Nintendo in honor of the beloved plumber. These announcements include confirming release dates for upcoming games, reviving some retro classics, and a message from Miyamoto himself. So, let's go. In a message from Sekiro Miyamoto, it was announced that a new animated film, Beasts on the World of Super Mario Brothers, is in production at Illumination and will be released on April 3rd, 2026. No further details were given on the film, so it's unclear if this will be a sequel or a spinoff to 2023's Super Mario Brothers movie. What? The exact if you go to the if you go to the tweet, if you go to the actual tweet, you know, it starts off with the classic, this is Miyamoto, so you know it's serious. Yeah. Um we are he says, we are creating a new animated film based on the world of Super Mario Brothers. This film is planned for release in theaters on April 3rd, 2026 in the US and many other markets throughout the month of April and other territories. I got a beard hair stuck in my coffee. So that does not say Super Mario Brothers 2. That just that says scares me a now. new movie in the world of Super Mario Brothers. Now Brother. I'm scared. Like, I thought it was just straight up going to be Mario 2. Right. Logic dictates. Yeah. You know, okay, do a sequel. Right. This is Nintendo. And I got to throw Logic out up, the window. Yeah, they set up a sequel. There's plenty of room to go in a sequel to Mario Brothers. But they said in the world of Super Mario Brothers. Could be a Peach movie. Could be a Peach movie. It could be the Donkey Kong movie that's rumored to be like getting steam. Could be a Luigi movie. Could be. Oh, that would suck. That would. Luigi's terrible. <laughs> Nobody likes Luigi. <laughs> it would be like uh, the GameCube all over again when we got Luigi's Mansion, and I was like, "This is fucking Mario," yeah. and I was all mad about it. That's that's really weird. Yeah, I, I don't like that. But uh, I, I'm sure it's Mario. Too, I'm, yeah, but. it's got to be. Uh, we'll let you know the details once we're ready to share more. This time, to the staff at Illumination Nintendo are working together. We're thinking about broadening Mario's world further, and it it'll have a bright and fun story. We hope uh, we hope you'll look forward to it. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, first movie was fine. It was definitely fine. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just, it's again, it's weird that they didn't just say the sequel to Super Mario Brothers is in development. It's a movie in the world of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, that weirds me out. Yeah. Uh, besides that, uh, they did, they, there's a new trailer for Paper Oh, is it a new trailer? Or did they just say it's Paper the Mario? Annu- it's the announcement. Uh, it's a trailer for the announcement of the release date for Luigi's Mansion 2 HD oh. and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door HD. Both announcements were made via official Nintendo social media accounts. Thousand Year Door will release first on May 23rd, with Luigi's Mansion 2 coming a month later on June 27th. Both titles continue Nintendo's string of remakes and remasters of late, something that feel 
that may feel is a sign that newer titles are being saved for the imminent Switch successor. People were sharing screenshots of Paper Mario, and it looked great. Yeah. Uh, I that I that's what made me assume it was a new trailer. Yeah. But I guess it's just like a title. Screen. Yeah. So a short little announcement from them. Yeah. Uh, f- next up, the Switch Online games, which we talked about earlier, and lastly. Uh, a Lego Mario Kart set is coming next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yay. So much Mario stuff. Yeah. All the Mario all the time. They also tweeted a bunch of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Not a lot of it is uh, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> they tw- had little tweets of videos of their previous uh Mario games. Uh, everything that's available on the Switch, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, they even did some Mario Maker stuff. They they they, they finally acknowledged Mario Maker. It's been He's years. Like, oh, you remember this? Yeah. I didn't realize that. I, well, I mean, I know I knew of this, but I forgot. Uh, you're not able to upload levels to the original Super Mario Maker anymore. Right. Is that yeah. online service is mm-hmm. down. But uh, there are people who are trying to complete all of the levels oh geez. why did that camera just turn off <laughs> was that the main one? Oh no that's mine again oh my, my freaking camera's not working for some reason uh so yeah people are trying to complete every mario maker level okay. so uh i think there's only 20 left that that have no completion how many levels are there in total there's there's still a lot yeah. hundreds of thousands yes. but uh they all have clears. There's a couple of levels that nobody has ever beaten yet. Okay. And I think there's only like 20. There's okay. like really not a lot. Yeah. And the servers are completely shutting down, so you won't even be able to to get them. Yeah. I don't know if you won't be able to play the levels or if you just won't be able to show that you beat the level. I would imagine you won't be able to play them because like how do you access them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that ends in April at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Oh, they have eight left? Holy oh, wow. shit. So there's eight levels left. Damn. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And you can imagine these levels are really hard. But yeah. there's a bunch of Twitch streamers who are like going for it. Yeah. Got to get the old Wii. Got to dust yeah. dust off the old Wii. Uh, Wii U, I'm yes. sorry. Oh, the Wii is right here. Right there, yeah. We got it right. I hacked it. Oh, you did? I did hack it. Uh, soft mod or hard mod? Soft? I, I, I didn't. There's no hardware in it. Okay. Yeah. So it's soft mod. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was confused because I am rock hard. Of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was not hard at all to do. Right. Uh, but ripping games ain't in the ass. Okay. I mean, it's like fine, but like the files are massive yeah. and you gotta like, uh, shrink them down a little well, bit. How and, ma- and the cart, the, the, the discs, all of our discs are a little fucked up. Yeah. So it doesn't want to rip them. Like, how I'll, massive are we talking? Cause like double it- the size they should be. Because they're DVDs. They should be like 8 gigs in most. So I ripped uh, 1080 Avalanche for yeah. GameCube. Yeah. That was a hundred. That was 1.25 gigabytes. Okay. That's a GameCube game. Yeah, that, that's about right. And I was able to shrink it down to 800 megabytes. Okay. So it's like reasonable. But it should be smaller than that. You could, I think you can shrink it even smaller than that. I think GameCube discs like are like max capacity 1.5 gigs. Uh, Wii Sports, I ripped it and it was like, it was over a gig. Yeah. But that game, I think it's only 300 megabytes. So it's, it, the, 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 it's weird. It's, mm-hmm. it's weird the way that you, that you rip the stuff off yeah. there. I tried use, oh, I got to give you back your Blu-ray drive. Okay. Fucking doesn't. No. Doesn't work. That, I mean, it works. Your yeah. Blu-ray drive okay, is fine. Good. Was- I'm just like to rip stuff. Right. It is an absolute nightmare. Okay. You want to know how to rip a Dreamcast game? Oh boy, <laughs> Dreamcast games. I didn't know this. There's two layers to them. Uh-huh. So, so a Dreamcast game has it's it's there's like you can see a visible circle right. in it. So there's one layer on the outside and one layer on the inside. Mm-hmm. What you have to do is have a disc that you can run while it's open. Have a disc drive that you can run while it's open. Yeah. And what you do is you got to trick it into thinking it's an audio. You, you rip half of it normally, and then you want to trick it into thinking it's an audio CD. <laughs> then you want to open it, pull it out, put it back in while it's spinning. Okay. And that's how it dumps the rest. I said, fuck all okay. that. I'm not doing that. 
Uh, also, you need a specific drive. All yeah. of these systems require old specific drives okay. that don't exist. Because I know that my drive can rip Blu-ray movies, yeah. no problem. Yeah. So I guess because also well, too, that's a Blu-ray, right? I was gonna say, you know, G Dreamcast doesn't technically use CDs; it uses GD ROMs. The Wii yeah. doesn't use DVDs; it uses Wii optical drives, uh, Wii optical discs, and even like. Um, the, play, the PS2, which technically does use a DVD, uses some like proprietary bullshit to make it, you know, hard to rip and things like that. Yeah, I haven't tried PlayStation, uh, which I probably should. I, I focus mostly on the Nintendo stuff. Yeah. Um, I maybe tr maybe try that then. Maybe try because PlayStation and Xbox are DVD. Xbox 360 is DVD. Let me hang on to it a little is, longer. Yeah, everything I, else is Blu-ray. I'm yeah. gonna need it for B-roll. Anyway. Take your time. Um, I also need to fix your. Uh, your, what do you call it? Steam Deck. Yes. Um, there's this really cool app called uh, I already forgot it. MPF. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but it it, it there's a drop down and you click what system you're trying to rip, and it has a way to rip basically every system. But okay. if you don't have the hardware for it, it just won't yeah. work. Um, so there were some cool things that I found, but it's still it's. Just an absolute nightmare trying to back up your yeah. your old stuff. It's it's they try everything in their power to 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 block you out of it. I gotta fix this camera. Uh, what's what else should we be talking about? Uh, oh, there was other stuff that Nintendo uh did for Mario Day. They were tweeting about about all of the games. Uh, they tweeted uh, a montage of every game that Mario has had throughout the years. But only the ones that are available on the Switch. Yes. And and only how to play them on the Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, so people were in an uproar because they were missing uh, Sunshine. Yeah. And Galaxy yes. 1 and Galaxy 2. So I thought that was funny. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's funny because those are available. You know what? Uh, you can buy Super Mario Sunshine and Galaxy 1. Yeah. It is, guess how much on Amazon if I want to buy Super Mario All-Stars? I looked it up yesterday. You know, because when that game like originally went off the market, like the price did not go up. Yeah, I know. It was like, it was retail for like a year. But it went up. Uh, triple? Yeah, uh, it was, it's 130. Okay. That's better than I thought it would be. Still mm -hmm. way too much for those games. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, yeah. It was like sixty bucks for like a really long yeah. time, but no, it went up. It went up, baby. Media preservation front end. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. All right, uh, that's it for Mario Day. Well, no, let's have our own Mario Day. Yeah, Since Nintendo didn't do too hot of a job. Uh, I got a couple games you should try. I got them over on my Twitter. My links are bad, but you know what? I didn't feel like fixing them because uh. I'd probably get the tweet deleted anyway. Yeah. If they linked it directly to it. So, Super Mario Flashback is a must-play game. Have you ever played Super Mario Flashback? You can play it on your MacBook, use your keyboard. It's fun uh, as hell. It's one world. I think I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen you play it. I've never actually played it. It's very good. Yeah. It, it's it's one world. Uh, so just three levels, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's awesome. It, it's it's at imagine. If Mario stayed in two dimensions or like the 32 bit, 64 right. bit era, that's what this game looks like. Uh, the next one I have here is Super Quickie World, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a Kaizo type game. Uh, world. This is, I think they call it a Kaizo Light. Okay. So it's like an entry level into into Kaizo. You don't need to do any fancy uh you don't need to do any fancy what do you call it? like 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 shell jumps and right. stuff. Uh you'll Sorry, I'm trying to turn off the friggin' <laughs> the camera switching. Oh, whatever, I give up. It'll just be black sometimes. Um yeah, you don't have to do any fancy tricks. It's 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 really hard, but it, it it's Kaizo beginner, so it's hard, but you're not you don't have to be that great at Mario right, to, okay. to get through it. Like Kai, if you've ever played Kaizo Mario before, it's it feels impossible. I've seen many of videos on Kaizo Mario, and they're all funny. 
This but one, this I know, one, I know my limits. This one doesn't seem uh, that terrible. Okay. Uh, next one is S Super Mario Brothers One X SMB One X. Okay. So this ROM hack is notable because it is an amalgamation of every 2D Mario game. Okay. It puts them all together into into like one game. So you have ability. You can some levels you pick things up like it's uh, uh, American Mario Two. Yeah. Um. All different abilities are in it. There's the ice flower. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Here's Luigi picking stuff up like it's Mario 2. Um, it's great. It, it even has stuff from the Game Boy games. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool. It, I clicked on the link and it says not found. <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, look it up. SMB1X. Right. The last thing I have here is the Super Mario 64 PC port. Uh, this is notable... This is the archive.org link. It was actually pretty hard to find uh, yeah. uh, the the legitimate link for this. Um, but this one is notable because there's a lot of different options. First of all, you can run it in 4K. Uh, it doesn't look that great. It's still, it's right, still, yeah. the, the still Mario 64. It's still yeah. Mario, Mario 64. But there's a lot of different options. You can make it so when you grab a star, uh, you can just keep playing. You don't yeah. have to leave the level. Um, what else? There's also, uh, enhanced movement mechanics. Like you can have movement like you would in Mario Odyssey and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there is a free look rotating camera. Ooh, that so, alone is like, yeah. yeah. So it, it really fixes a lot about, uh, Mario 64. So check that out. That link is there. It's, it's on uh, mm. archive.org. I'm trying to see, I have a clips video about it somewhere uh they're funny because you're not the one playing what are you talking about? uh anyway of course i can't find the thing now where are these links again go to twitter.com slash bob wolf uh for the uh smb1x and for what was the other one SMB one X uh, and uh Quickie World, super yeah. quickie world. For those, go uh just to Google. You'll find it. Mm -hmm. uh, super Mario World Central has a lot of great ROM hacks. Uh unfortunately for ROM hacks, a lot of the time, especially for the Super Nintendo ones, you need the ROM already. Uh and they give you a tool to patch the ROM. To, they take you have the ROM, they take it, and they fuck it up right. to, to make the ROM hack. Got it. Same thing with the Super Mario PC port. Yeah. You need your own copy of Super Mario 64. Got and it. And then they will, uh, they will patch it for you, basically. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. That's, uh, those are the games that I, that I wanted to highlight. Anyway, happy Mario Day, everybody. Yippee. Will, can you read notifications so that i can fix my camera please. yes uh where are we over here um do, do, do. uh sorry i got saw two days ago i got confused uh all right we got dj skeletor thanks for the five gifted subs we got lord nora j uh am i in the right podcast to cover the uh servaza crystal meme the greatest thing to come out of Star Wars in 2024. I am unfamiliar. That sounds like Pokemon. It does. Was there a Star Wars thing that came out in 2024? I'm so behind. I still have not seen Ahsoka. I have not been keeping up with any of the... I've been keeping up with the main Marvel Star Wars comic that takes place between Empire and Jedi. And let me tell you, very disappointing. <laughs> I'm curious now because it's like, all right, I'm going to go on a tangent while you fix that camera. The time between Empire and Jedi is only one year. So there's not a lot of ground to cover. Back in the old expanding universe, that was done fine. We had one story with Shadows of the Empire, the N64 game. That was it. It was the game, the book, and the comic. It was all the same story, but it covered different angles of the story. And that got you the year. That covered the year. This current Marvel run has been going on for like four or five years. And... They're not any closer to getting to Return of the Jedi. Like, I like so much is happening. It's like 
a lot of meandering and it's kind of boring. Right now, Lando is on trial for his crimes against the uh, the rebellion, which I feel like should have happened 20 issues ago. But what do I know? Uh, anywho, um, bloody FPS for, uh, for 22 months. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, ting, walla, walla, bing, bang. <laughs> Can't sing that anymore. Uh, Why not? The the Witch Doctor song? I don't think oh. that's culturally appropriate. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I understand. Um, B Rad LP um, for five months. Did you see about Team Zero Percent? It's a team that is trying to beat every uncleared Mario Maker one level before it shuts down. They have seven left at the moment. Oh, I didn't know that there was a name to it. I thought I, it was just random Twitch streamers. Uh, they're all these people are always organized. Literally, you know? like it was like two days ago. Yeah. They had twenty left, so they've made a lot of progress. Yeah. Good on them. Uh, Brutal Beast with the 39 months. Hey, Bob and Will, thoughts on the Batman Part 2 being delayed? I just heard about that. Apparently, it was coming out, supposed to come out next year. It got delayed till 2026. I didn't even know. Like, yeah. I knew that it got delayed. I had no idea it was even supposed to come out next year. Yeah. So um, I don't want to be too upset about it. That's fine. Take take your time. The, I mean, the, the Batman 1 was already like delayed due to COVID. And I think that honestly benefited the film because it could like take a break and stuff and like work on it that movie fucking ruled it does it does rule so so good um did you see dune no i want to see dune i gotta see i gotta yeah. see the first one that's that's on one of the streaming services you mooch off of i didn't realize it was the uh same director as blade runner yeah and i like that movie yeah similar so. vibe too good so i i that's what i want yeah uh yeah yeah uh, and then J Buggy, uh, Will totally understands my love hate relationship with PC gaming. I feel you, Will. I saw it's not in the notes, but I saw um, Night Dive Studios, who they did the System Shock remake. They had a big announcement trailer. It's like, it's finally coming to console. And I thought to myself, oh, a real system. <laughs> <laughs> so now System Shock is a real video game because before it was just some weird PC game, and now it's on a real video game apparatus. <laughs> Everything would have been fine if your Steam Deck didn't fucking explode for no reason. <laughs> if it ran fine and not, uh, you no, would, none you of would... the, I had no problems. But no, you, now yeah. that now that I'm having problems, back down the shithole for you. I really want to know what happened. I, dude, <laughs> I told you what happened. I was playing a 15 year old well, Batman fix game. It. Like when yeah. I find it, the button might be fucked. I, I will figure it, it's it out. It's a whole thing. Uh, check out last week's show. Check out last week's show. Uh, Zach also, thank you for the toonie. Oh, over on YouTube. Hey guys. Hello. How you doing? Uh, all right, let's move on to other news. Like yes. for example, there was an Xbox partner showcase. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Over the course of 30 minutes, uh, they showed off 14 incredible games coming to Xbox and Windows from third-party partners. So this is no first-party stuff. Um, and everybody knows these are the best uh, showcases when there's no first-party <laughs> yeah. stuff at all. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 Online set for full release on March 21st for Xbox Series X and S. Um, it's finally coming to Xbox after all these years being a PC I, and PlayStation exclusive. I never knew that. I thought it was already there. Nope. Uh, People love Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Defo some nerd shit. Oh, though. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is coming to Game Pass in 2024. Um, is this the cool one that I thought was like Onimusha, but it's not? Yeah, this is the cool one. I'm not going to play it, but it does look What's cool. What's the name of it again? Uh, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. Okay. Uh, Capcom delivered a detailed look at the upcoming game, a unique single player game set in Japan in a Japanese inspired universe. Uh, yeah. This looks awesome. It I, does. I remember seeing yeah. this. This looks really cool. Mm -hmm. It looks like Okami almost a little that bit. That was it. Yeah, yeah, Okami. But, I, thought uh, was, I thought it was Okami at first. Wait, is it? Okay. It made it look like it was 2D for a second. Yeah. Um, this is. Uh, oh, it's single player? Yeah. I thought this was multiplayer. No, Am I getting this confused part. with a different game? It might be. It looks a little bit like Monster Hunter, but yeah. I guess that makes sense. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, the Sinking City Two was revealed. It's the sequel to those like Lovecraftian like indie games that like people really seem to love, like The Sinking City. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is this like a mystery game? Kinda. One of them. One of them it's it's got monsters in it. 
Um, okay. Persona 3 Reloaded Expansion Pass announced. Sega delivered the, the first hell? exclusive details on the upcoming Persona 3 Reload uh, Expansion Pass, which will allow players to dive deeper into the world of Persona 3 Reloaded, um, featuring new costumes, background music, and extended story content with episode Aegis The Answer. I have to pull something up because my only friend on threads, uh, Charlie Fenn, uh, actually wanted to comment on it because there's controversy around this particular expansion. I think I might know. Do you know what it is? Is it the fact that you can romance your teachers? No. Okay. Because um, <laughs> it should be. Yeah. That should be the controversy. <laughs> so, let's see. If... Ah. Uh, f- all right, my doesn't... controversy, I mean, my issue with this is that uh, it's a remake and there's DLC. Well, the that and the controversy thing is the DLC is content that was in the original game. Oh, that's really messed up. Yeah. I don't like that at all. That's the bit. That's the big like, what the hell? And I think that's that's very egregious. Yeah, you know, I don't like that. People at all. were complaining that like the separate ways mission in Resident Evil Four was a ten dollar add on, but like that's a little bit, you know, because like separate ways was not part of the GameCube release. It was only added to the PlayStation oh, okay. port. So. You know, if you wanted to play separate ways, you had to buy the game again. So I need to talk to my friends who are actually playing this game yeah. because uh, everybody seems to love this. Everybody thinks that uh, Pers- everybody loves the Persona games. Yeah, and everybody thinks that this remake is like incredible. Yeah, uh, because they liked Persona Three, I guess. Uh, but I need to see what the deal is with uh, this. Like, how important was this DLC? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it was a you know I think it was I don't want to say it was the end of the game, but like pretty sure like if if it was in the original game it was in there for a reason when dlc became a big thing with single player games back Mm -hmm. in the day way back in the yeah uh it was one of the assassin's creed games had the most egregious two i think it was two it it was one of the twos yeah it was either two brotherhood or i think boner fest what's one of the (laughs) (laughs) revelations okay one of them had like you're playing the game and then two of the missions just are that not was in two. the game that was in two. the middle of the game i remember yeah it just fades to black and then fades back no. and like time passes and shit passes. what happens is like even before that like you're in the animus like waiting for the world to load and, like that's assassin's creed and all of your teammates go huh the file's corrupted I can't access two of your memories. And then they start to describe what the memories are. And they're like, okay, I guess we'll come back to that. I have the next memory though. You wanted to do that? Yeah. And th- but like you like load in as, as a uh, you load Ezio in and, like and, two and, years later yeah, and all this shit happens. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, if you want that, pay us $10. Yeah. So it's like, it's, what the fuck, dude? That was the second time Ubisoft did that. Cause the first time was with their Prince of Persia, 2008, a game I love, mm-hmm. but I don't know the ending of it because the ending costs $8. <laughs> that shit i that shit's yeah. not okay that that was we were putting up with a lot in that era because you mentioned that yeah. was the era of them trying to uh, the, the what, what this fucking camera dude <laughs> fucking hate this stupid camera yeah. what do they call it? It, it we we it was like the era of uh there we go i fixed it so i won't yeah. go to that fucking camera the the era of the ten dollar uh, horse armor no Project ten dollar horse. No, no, no! But that was the era it's of like horse you, armor. It's like you had a stroke. <laughs> horse armor. <laughs> no, okay. Horse armor was the original controversy I where understand. like Bethesda was charging like fifteen dollars for horse armor per horse armor for Skyrim, and then Project ten dollars was actually towards the end of that generation. It wasn't like in the beginning. It was like towards the middle, towards the end. But yeah, okay. there that was the era where you think microtransactions and loot boxes and that shit is bad now. Like they were charging you for like half of the game back then. Yeah. Well, um yeah, that we were putting up with a lot and then the Assassin's Creed thing happened and people were like, no. Yeah. That we don't like this at all. Yeah. So th- then we started to get like uh what would you call it? Like uh ground rules we were like all right yeah. we don't want you to make the dlc like before you release the game basically yeah. you know like we want it to be 
additional content, not taking content away. But then they would find ways to work around the ground rules by like, okay, if you buy the game new, we'll give you the whole game. If you're a piece of shit and you buy it used, then you got to pay us 10 extra dollars. Yes. Anyway. All right. More games. Stalker. Uh, Stalker. Legends of the Zone Trilogy available uh, right now. This is a collection of the three Stalker games, uh, Shadows of Chernobyl, Clear Sky, and Call of uh, Priat. This is all um, in the lead up to the fourth Stalker game in the series, Stalker 2, uh, coming, <laughs> God, <laughs> coming later God this year. God damn it, dude. <laughs> Apparently, these are, like, really popular games. I've never played any of them, but I've heard, like, they're, like, really hardcore, like, post not post-apocalyptic, but, like, you know, walking around nuclear waste field. Okay. Type of game. When I think of this type of game, I'm thinking of Metro, and that's Yeah, it. which I have Metro 1 and 2 on my Xbox that mm -hmm. I might as well just play those. Uh, uh, next, Unknown 9 Awakening, Ban Bandai Namco and Reflector Entertainment uh, give us Unknown 9. Okay, cool. Yeah, what is it? It just looks like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Okay, Not never mind. It looks completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Is this the game where there's like a bunch of different... No, I don't know what this game is. Yeah. Next is Zao. Uh, Abu Akbar Salim. Oh, no. That's the, the narrator. The game is called Tales of Kenzera Zao. Now, this looks exactly like Prince of Persia. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it looks good, though. Prince of Persia yeah. was good. And I mean, I don't think it's like ripping them off because I'm assuming this game was in development, you know, for a long time. That's a shame for them, though. Yeah. Because this could have been so cool yeah. if Ubisoft didn't make Prince of Persia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, Chucky is coming to a game within Roblox. W what? <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. Rocket Ride Games and Universal Products and Experiences uh, revealed Griefville survived the night for Roblox uh, during the partner broadcast. Um, describing itself as a chilling interactive experience, it's inspired by beloved classic horror films of the 80s and 90s with Chucky um, at the center of it all. This game looks unfinished. Oh my god. Oh, it's Roblox. Well, you know, I don't want to say that because... There's some crazy Roblox games yeah. out there. Like, honestly, I thought this was an asset flip at first. So this is official? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's in an Xbox showcase. Yeah. That's... This is ridiculous. Yeah. This. Why do horror games just let anybody have the license? <laughs> I don't know. I think... Because I think Chucky's also in Dead by Daylight, isn't he? I don't know. I, I have know. no idea. Everybody's in Dead by Daylight. Well, like this is like full on because they even got Brad Dorf to do the voice of Chucky. Oh, that's this is so weird. Yeah, Richard Ware in the chat says, "Change the position of the show. You both aren't looking at each other. Neither the camera. It's weird." Okay, we gotta, we gotta, we'll come back in ten minutes. We gotta move. Yeah, all of the furniture around <laughs> for this fucking guy. <laughs> uh, anyway, creatures of Ava. A new Creature Saver game from Inverse uh, Inverge Studios. Is that what they're calling them now? Creature Savers? Pokemon. Yeah. It's Pokemon. Yeah. This looks cool. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty. I don't know yeah. any gameplay or anything. Do they have guns? I got to tell you, putting guns in a Pokemon <laughs> game is so cool. Just being able to walk up to a Pokemon and be like, I want that guy. Bam! Bam. <laughs> Just fucking have. It. You shoot it in between the eyes yeah. and then you yuck a Pokeball at it and then it's yours. It's so cool. Like, imagine Arceus, but you had a bow and arrow. Yeah. Like, that'd be so sick. I am curious to see if people like go ape shit for this, like they did Pal World. Because I definitely think there's a hunger for Pokemon style games. Put that a gun in that it. The Pokemon oh! Company. Oh, you got a you got a beam. You got a magic beam. There's a hunger for Pokemon style games that the Pokemon Company is not satiating. Yes. And Every all these other types of games are like coming up and like, yeah, filling I mean, that void. There were there were there's a lot of opportunity yeah. for a for a Pokemon style game that isn't Pokemon and 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 they're really everyone's dropping the ball yeah. on it. All right, next up we got Monster, Monster Jam. Jam! <laughs> Woo! You like monster trucks? Hell yeah, you do, yeah, baby. There you go. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> uh, the Atlers. I don't remember what this one looks like. 
Yeah, well, I'm um, looking at it. It looks... Uh, adventure, survival, and base building. Okay, so boring. Stupid. It looks yeah. stupid. Kazan. Kazan. The first uh, berserker, Kazan. Can these yeah. guys put, like, actual words in this? <laughs> <laughs> Based it, on the Dungeon and Fighter universe. I didn't know that was a universe. I think we've seen this before, and I think I thought the frame... No, I've never seen this before. Yeah, I don't know. The frame rate looked weird at in yeah. one, of the, one of these shots. Looks cool, though. Yeah. A little bloody, but it looks kind of yeah. cool. Might be able to get into it. Uh, Frostpunk 2 is coming to PC Game Pass July 24th. Okay. Yep. Good on you. Frostpunk 2. Don't know nothing about that game. Sleight of hand. There's a lot of games here. Yeah. Uh, this is a new game reveal from Riff Raff Games. Oh, yeah, this is a weird trailer. Uh, upcoming third-person stealth game of hard-boiled espionage action. Uh, we'll have you infiltrate your old witch coven um, using a cursed deck of cards in a rain select city of Taboo, where ritual magic and cursed artifacts set apart those with power from those without. And there's cards and stuff, and there's a cinematic trailer that shows you absolutely nothing about what the gameplay is. So yeah. there's all this cool cinematics, and for all we know, it's a fucking card game. Yeah. They say at the end, they say what type of game. But It is a third-person, hard-boiled stealth sim. Yeah. Okay, you have to use your imagination yeah. to try to put this together. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Gotta be honest, nothing there that's really sticking out to me. I'm not gonna run out and like get any of these games. Yeah, I'm not. This didn't excite me. Yeah, like you know, maybe if down the road, um, you know, when I see more of it and like see the reviews and stuff, maybe uh, Kinutsigami might interest me. I was gonna say Kinutsigami uh was the only thing that got me excited, but yeah. now that I know that it's a single player, I legitimately thought it was a multiplayer yeah. because in the trailer. There's a bunch of people. You you have like you have a party. You have a party. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was. I thought you were rolling up with your crew. Yeah, but and that got me excited. But apparently not. Like imagine Monster Hunter, but uh, you're fighting like you know demons, like at Sekiro or something. Yeah. Like, that'd be sick to have like a crew with you. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it just seems like a like a first person game. I mean, I mean, a first, a single player game. So uh, yeah. that, that doesn't excite me as much as it once did. So if anything, this partner showcase made me less excited. Yeah. Um. Okay. I guess that's it for the partnership. Uh, before we get into the Apple stuff, let's have let's have a have a little fun. Okay. Backlog. 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 Hey guys, backlog time! It's that time again! It's that time again! Yeah! Backlog time! If you're unfamiliar Yay. with how this works, every game we have ever bought throughout our entire lives uh, gets put into an uh, Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one of those games at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we played it. Currently we have 900 and what now? 900. Period. 900. Yeah. Okay. And... Had a random number generator. We got 496. 496. Will's going to pull that from our Excel spreadsheet. Oh, boy. Uh, it's definitely a game we haven't played. PsyOps of the Mindgate Conspiracy for the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2. Oh, yeah. why do we have this? I This is definitely a game I bought. I bought it. You bought. I bought so it. So you got a lot of explaining to do. After the fact. This this was one of those games that came out around that around the PlayStation 2 era. This was this is the prime example of a double A game. Because it wasn't okay. made it was made by Midway, but this wasn't like one of their top tier franchises. Long this Island's own Midway? That's a claim. Fuck. Chicago's <laughs> own Midway. <laughs> um so this wasn't like Midway's like top tier franchise. It wasn't Mortal Kombat or anything. This was like a new a new property. With a unique gimmick where, like, you know, you're a, you have, like, psychokinetic abilities. You can grab people and, like, you know, you can see. You have force powers, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but you're, like, you know, a cool military bro. This guy who's doing the gameplay on screen right now really wants to do the, the force abilities. He's yeah. trying really hard not to shoot anybody. Well, I mean, because that was, like, a unique gimmick at the yeah. time. You know, it was... It wasn't really, like, the era 
of first person and third person shooters, but it was definitely like the Halo era. And it was this, the time period where games were trying to get more like serious and more like, you know, quote unquote realistic. And this game came along like, and it was of that ilk, but it had like the unique, you know, ability to like, you know, grab things with your mind and like throw them at people, use the environment against. So your... what year was this? This was 2004. So this was after uh, the Kyle Katarin games? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because they, that's, when I think Force abilities back in yeah. the day, those are the games, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, the Dark Force, well. Jedi Knight. <laughs> Jedi Knight yeah. and uh, uh, Jedi Academy. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's what also helped this game too, according to the Wikipedia, uh, was its ragdoll physics powered by the Havoc 2 system. So, it wasn't just like that you were grabbing dudes and throwing them like they were like you can see here like there he's ragdollizing all over the place. Um this game was actually very well received when it came out. It was one of those like not sleeper hits, but it was one of those games where like it got good reviews across the board. People who played it like always like in hushed tones like, "Yo, know, have you played Psyops? Mm -hmm. You should try Psyops. Psyops is really good, man." Did did they ever make a sequel? No. Okay. Um, I think this was one of those games. Midway went out of business like not too long after this. They got bought by Warner Brothers. Um, so we'll never see a sequel to this. Um, there were talks of a sequel. They wanted to do a sequel, but it's too late. It's way too You're late. You're never yeah. gonna see a sequel for this game. Yeah. Um, and I think what sucks is a lot of the things that you know this game was doing. You know, I think a lot, especially nowadays, people are like, "Oh, so I'll just play a Star Wars game." But like, yeah, that's, what, that's but, what I'm thinking when I'm seeing this. But like a Star Wars game, if you have these powers, you're probably a Jedi and you're probably going to have a lightsaber. This one gives you a gun. <laughs> yeah, but like, again, uh, Jedi Knight. Yeah. You get a gun and, and Jedi <laughs> abilities, true. you know? You can yeah. do it all. But I mean, this is like clearly like a gritty uh, rated M, I assume. Uh, you're shooting I people and there's yes, blood rated, and stuff. Rated M for mature. Looks like people are being tortured. Yeah. Uh, why did you get this? And when did you get it? I I definitely got it like years after the PS2 okay. was relevant. Um, I got it because I had heard. Oh man, have you played Saps? Saps is really good, man. You, play and you bought it and then you never played. And it. Never played. It. It. Never played. It. So, that's the that's the problem. You're gonna see that a lot on this show. We just buy games at conventions and that's, are like not play it. That's the backlog, baby. Yeah. We don't. Sometimes we don't know why we bought things. I do have this like. <laughs> Big grand idea that like, you know, when I hit retirement age, I'm just going to I'm actually going to go through the backlog and like at least play everything for at least like an hour mm -hmm. just like to try it. And will that ever happen? Pro I'll probably be dead by then. Honestly, <laughs> I had a years ago. I had a big grandiose idea where I wanted to uh, uh, I wanted to start like a like a Patreon for a YouTube channel where it was just you know how there's like world of long plays yeah and it just they play every game yeah i wanted that i wanted to do that but have it be the highest quality uh capture possible right so just have a guy beat every game yeah. and capture the whole thing at the highest quality possible and let the footage be used freely by anybody yeah i thought that would be cool. that would be great yeah uh so let us know in the comments if you want to see a yeah. YouTube channel that just does that. Uh, PlayStation 2 uh, was, I think, the first time you bought the PlayStation 2. It was the first time like we had money yes. of our own I, to buy a console. I bought, I mean, we didn't have a lot of money. I bought it pre-owned from GameStop. But it was a great purchase because it came with like Metal Gear. Um, and we were able to, we bought it fairly late. We got it like, I think, 2003, 2004. But you know, back then there weren't as many games and we had much more time. So we were able to fill out the back catalog of like all the games we missed. Yeah. And like in like two years, we played like all the major, you know, PS2 games. Our parents uh, would never allow us to have more than one console per generation. Correct. So this is the first time we took a stand. We took a stand. <laughs> and well, you had you had a job. Yeah. So you uh, you 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 uh, used your own money to buy a PlayStation yep. 2. Um, and there you go. Uh, pre-owned <laughs> pre-owned i mean we had to do what we had to do yeah and then uh i played burnout and had a good time on yeah it. and metal gear and metal gear guys that's been the backlog yeah. thanks for hanging out everybody uh subscribe if you want to see more backlog also come to a podcast sometime we do these on the wolf den podcast
Bye. Bye. Now on to more podcasts. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We're back, baby. Uh, next news topic. Oh, let's. Oh, there's some notifications. I think yeah. Mako Fox thinks about 100 bits. Hey, Wolf Bros. Thank you for putting on this wonderful show. Love listening every week while I disc golf. You know what that is? Yeah, I know what that is. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, and that's it. J Buggy, you read that one before, right? Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, all right. What was your first job, Will? Both of our first jobs. Should, am I? Should, should I say it? This yeah, is wrong. I, I I've mean, said it before. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of them, so it's not like both of our first jobs was Target. Yeah, that's not true. I worked at Subway Sandwiches for two hours. You worked there before Target for two hours. Oh, okay. Uh, and then never again. Uh, but then yeah, Target was yeah. the first real job okay. for the both of us. We worked at the same Target. Yeah. <laughs> Now I shop at that Target, and we were there, and we were in the toy aisle, uh, not just for me, but for the kids. And we see they sell they sell Target shopping carts for kids, which we have for our kids. But then they sell a Target. You can buy it. Yeah, you can buy oh. it. It comes with like fake food and stuff. Okay, that's cool. But then they sell a Target cash register, like a toy cash register. And my wife is looking at it, and I just stop her immediately and go, no. I used to work here. I used to be the cashier. <laughs> That's trauma. That's not a gl glorious job. That's trauma, yeah. and I don't want to see it. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about everybody's favorite topic on this podcast. Epic Games and their, their many lawsuits. This is a wild one, because, like, at first it was, you know, first Apple said this, and then they reversed it. And I still think there's a lot of, like, little intricacies that, like, might not be conveyed or whatnot. But a lot happens. A lot went on. Well, so we've talked about this previously, but uh, the EU ruled that Apple needs to allow alternative app stores, side-loading apps, yes. and all, USB-C, yeah. all of this stuff. Uh, a lot of it is only happening in the EU, though. Correct. Uh, and and that is the alternative app stores. Mm -hmm. This is fucking awesome for so many reasons. And I'm doing a video now on preserving games and and, yeah. and, and emulation and modding and stuff and how uh, companies like Nintendo are trying really hard to fight against it. This EU ruling is so good for even stuff like games preservation. Yeah. But uh, it's the fucking EU. We need this shit to happen here. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. This is the, the the blowback from this ruling. Yeah. Uh, first off, Apple kills Epic's iOS game store plans over app store criticism. Uh, Epic plans to release its own third-party app store on the iOS in the EU. Um, it could be in trouble after Apple terminated the developer account it plans to use. In a blog post published today, the company shared a letter sent by Apple's lawyers, which called Epic verifiably untrustworthy and said Apple does not believe that Epic will comply with its contractual commitments under its developer agreement. Please be advised that Apple has effective immediately terminated the developer program membership of Epic Games Sweden AB. The letter, which is dated March 2nd, states... It cites Apple's contractual right to terminate its developed program license agreement with the company uh, with the company at Apple's sole discretion. Uh, while Apple's termination of the developer account impacts uh, Epic's plans to launch its own app store on iOS, Epic CEO Tim Sweeney suggested it uh, in a briefing. Friend that, of the show. Friend of the show, because he liked to tweet him on one time. Um, he stated uh, in a briefing that Epic could still bring back Fortnite to iOS via another company's third-party app store in the European Union. Uh, the exchange came in the wake of Apple announcing its plans to allow third-party app stores on iOS in the EU as a result of the Block's new Digital Market Markets Act regulation, which goes into effect this week. Epic quickly announced plans to launch a game store on iOS as a result of the changes and relaunch Fortnite on the platform following its removal in 2020. It announced it had secured the developer account for Epic Games Sweden on February 16th, reversing a ban Apple implemented alongside Fortnite's removal. Apple alluded to its earlier ongoing battle, uh, ongoing ban on Epic's accounts uh, in a statement to The Verge. Epic's egregious breach of its contractual obligations to Apple led courts to determine that Apple has the right to terminate any or all of Epic Games' wholly owned subsidiaries, affiliates, and or ent uh, entities under Epic Games' control at any time 
and at Apple's sole discretion. In light of Epic's past and ongoing behavior, Apple chose to exercise that right, said folks, uh, spokesperson Fred Sands. In an email uh, dated February 28th, shared by Epic Games, Apple's Phil Schiller uh, contacted Sweeney to ask for a written assurance that Epic Games will honor its commitments. Schiller cited concerns with Sweeney's public statements about Apple's DMA compliance um, and the fact that Epic breached its agreement with Apple in 2020 by adding third-party payment support to Fortnite on iOS, resulting in its removal. In plain, unqualified terms, please tell us why we should trust Epic this time, uh, Schiller's email concludes. Um, Sweeney responded the same day. Epic and its subsidiaries are acting in good faith and will comply with all terms of current and future agreements with Apple and will be glad to provide Apple with any specific further assurances on the topic that you'd like. Pause. So I need a, a little bit more of a refresher. Uh, the EU had some recent developments with Apple, uh, what we talked about before. Yeah. But Epic Games sued Apple over stuff many years ago that Correct. we've also talked about on this show. Correct. Uh, they lost that parts of that lawsuit. Yes. Most of it, I think. Most of it. Uh, did they win more of it in the EU? Mm -mm. No, this wasn't one of those cases? Mm -mm. Okay. So... So kind of this has nothing. The EU, the, the the EU situation kind of has nothing to do with Epic, but I would think that Epic sparked it. Probably, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so now this is Apple being extremely petty. Th this is and using their own like terms of service to be like, hey, we yeah. don't trust that you're gonna abide yeah, by. Yeah, this our is terms Apple saying like we don't. She can't sit with us. We don't like her because one thing she did many years ago. It's very like mean girl shit. Yeah, and Epic did that. They they uh, what they allowed alternative payment methods. Yeah, to skirt Apple's payment mm -hmm. methods. They did that uh, as a clear sign of rebellion, and they knew they were going to get taken. They did that so they could have reason for a lawsuit. They had the yeah. lawsuit ready to go, and then the as the second Apple pulled it, they're like, "All right, we're suing you. Here's everything." Yeah, and they even had a little commercial ready to go that was yeah. uh, about why Fortnite's not on the yeah. the iOS store and, and stuff. And that published immediately right mm -hmm. when they got deleted. So they, they knew exactly what they were doing. It was, a, it was an act of protest. Yeah. Uh, so now Apple is using that act of protest against them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what, what else do we need? To I mean, it, it goes on from here. There's more sites about like, you know, Epic has, in the past, Epic has... You know, gone against Apple's wishes and a letter um, on February 26th, uh, Tim Sweeney uh, and a recent submission in the Australian litigation said Apple is concerned for Epic Games Sweden does not intend to adhere to contractual commitments. Uh, basically, it's a lot of like Apple doesn't trust Epic and Epic's just like, what do you mean? Why don't you trust us? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean. It's petty bullshit, like yeah. like. There's no reason for Apple to not allow Epic to continue to operate. Right. They know why they broke the rules back in the day. It's, be yeah. it's because of this whole thing. Like yeah. Apple knows they're in the wrong because they lost the law. They lost this case in the EU. Yeah. So the EU is like, no, Apple, you are wrong. And now they're being like, oh, but uh, you, yeah, you, uh, fucking Epic Games. And it is all for now because Epic got unbanned by Apple. A few days later, Epic Games will open its iOS app store in the European Union. After all, the game publisher had its developer license revoked. Uh, um, but Epic Games now says that Apple has reversed its decision. This is following an inquiry from uh, the European Commission. Why don't we just read the tweet from uh, from Tim Sweeney? Okay. That? That'll make my life so much easier. Wait, I liked this tweet. <laughs> Did no, I even read this? Because we're best friends. The DMA went through its first major challenge with Apple banning Epic Games Sweden from competing with the App Store, and the DMA just had its first major victory. Following a swift inquiry by the European Commission, Apple notified the Commission that Epic uh, and Epic that it would relent and restore our access to bring back Fortnite and launch the Epic Games Store in Europe under the DMA law. A big win for European rule of law, for the European Commission, and for the freedom of developers worldwide to speak up. Free Fortnite. Uh, yeah, that's great. It, it, they must have known, like, like they're gonna get 
yeah shit on for that like like they're gonna break rules in the european union if yeah they, if, they, if they try to skirt around it like that like imagine uh imagine them just removing developer licenses for people who want to make their own app store yeah like like steam wants to make something now that they're allowed to by european law yeah. and then they're just like no you don't get to you yeah. take your license right that'd be messed up mm -hmm. um so and anti-competitive or whatever the hell you want to call it so this is great. This is yeah. good. Uh, no, this, this, is, is... this is government intervention gone right. Yes. Uh, and uh, we we need more of this here in America. I would yeah. like to have alternative app stores on my... On alternative my... app stores, alternative pay methods. Yeah. You know, it, it sucks every time I open up the Kindle app and I want to buy a book. I can't. I have to go to the web browser yeah. or I have to go on my computer and do it. I can't just do it in app. Yeah. I can't subscribe to Spotify in app. I can't subscribe to Netflix in app. Very dumb. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of uh, technology brought a lot of issues into mm -hmm. the rule of law, and uh, nobody in government understands these issues. No, and no. It, it looks like they're understanding it in in Europe, but that's because I think Europe uh, doesn't have geriatrics in their yeah. in their. Uh... <laughs> well, they do, but I think they also have like a more. They're more well aware, like of the bigger issues, and they're around. probably not being paid off by probably. a big corporation. Yeah. Uh, that's another one of our issues: is that the big corporations are, yeah, they're like the, the politicians are benefiting for the big yeah. corporations. Um, anyway, that's uh, g congrats to the EU to our EU listeners. Yeah, another win for you guys. Uh, Jack Cooper, thanks for the three dollars Australian, I think. First super chat ever, listening while mowing lawns all day while working, and you guys get me through work every time. Oh my god. Thanks, Jack Cooper. Come over and mow my lawn. Yeah. I need, I need a, okay. my, my weeds are getting a little crazy. <laughs> need help with my weeds. I had a guy come over today, look at the roof. Oh yeah. A leak in the roof. Oh, how's yeah. He, he he got up on the on the ladder mm -hmm. and he goes and he looks and he goes. You want to come up here and look? I go, nope. <laughs> He's like, all right. The pictures with his phone and yeah. showed me. Um. Anyway, there's a leak in my, in yeah, my roof. No, I knew that. Yeah. Eight hundred dollars. That could be a lot worse. Yeah. yeah. No, it could. Yeah. But still, a little, little, little fucking leak. Yeah. You should. You should have gone up there. You should have seen what no. no no hear me out. You should have gone up there, seen what the problem was, and when he gave you the quote, say, Okay, I'll think about it, and then you go fix it yourself. Because <laughs> you knew where it was and it couldn't be that hard to fix. No, I'll tell you later. It 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 seems like a whole production. Okay. So uh, it's not a it's not so bad. Okay. It's not so bad. Um anyway. Where where do we go from here? Uh, talking about bad corporations, Warner Brothers is now erasing oh, games uh, as it plans to delist uh, Adult Swim published titles. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is telling. <laughs> I like I like the the editorial art yeah. they, they made here. It, it's uh, how would you describe this? The it's, the beginning of a Warner Bro the end of a Warner Brothers cartoon. Both. It's the it's the beginning and end slate of a Warner Brothers cartoon, like the circle logo that that uh. Porky the pig would be coming at yeah. him, but instead it's the, just the Valve logo. Yeah. <laughs> or the Steam logo. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is telling developers it plans to start retiring games published by its Adult Swim Games label. Uh, game makers who worked with the publisher tell Polygon. At least three games are under threat of being removed from Steam and other digital stores with the fate of other games published by Adult Swim unclear. The media conglomerate's plan... Uh, Planned removal of these games echoes cuts from its film and television business. Warner Brothers Discovery infamously scrapped plans to release nearly complete movies, Batgirl and Coyote vs. Acme, and remove multiple series from its streaming services. If Warner Brothers does go through with this plan to delist Adult Swim games from Steam and digital console stores, 18 or more games could be affected. The Coyote vs. Acme thing boggles my mind. I mean, Batgirl also boggles my yeah. mind. But Coyote versus Acme, you we we're, we're seeing stuff from that, and it looks completely done. Yeah, it was. It was finished. It was finished years ago, and they've just been sitting on it. And rather than release it, they'd rather just shove it in a vault 
No, they actually, they, they used the word delete. They would actually delete the movie from their archives. Why? I don't know. I, I guess they don't want to spend the, mud, the money marketing it. But then don't then. Just don't. It's a guess, Just... guess what, motherfucker? <laughs> this is marketing the movie. By threatening to get rid of the movie, you have successfully marketed the movie. And people now want to see this movie. But also, it's going to be worse just sitting in a vault. Just, yeah. just fucking release it. Just yeah. put it out there. I I forgot what it was, but like I forgot how much money they made. Uh, I forgot what their like tax write off was for Batgirl. It wasn't a lot, and apparently, like it was a lot less than the profits of the Flash. You know. Now I I don't think the Batgirl movie was any good. <laughs> I, I I think that that probably wasn't a good movie. The Batgirl movie was supposed to be like a b-level movie it wasn't supposed to be like it wasn't supposed to be a theatrical release it was supposed to be a streaming movie oh. it's supposed to be a lower tier streaming movie that you know had michael keaton as batman it had brendan frazier like at the peak of his comeback as the michael main keaton villain was, i didn't even know yeah it was michael keaton was bat as batman and like the fu some fucking guy who brought his 90 day fiance who now runs warner brothers is like no gone that's dumb i i try not to get like too personal with like you know the way hollywood studio execs work because like they're on another level of idiocracy and whatnot and i try not to think but like something about david zasloff just pisses me off like i want to fight him <laughs> physically Warner Brothers has a lot of great IP that is just burning. Yeah. There's just no, they're not they doing anything with it. They have a lot of great it. IP that they don't, yeah, they don't know what to do with. Yeah. And the things that they do do with it are like just terrible. Yeah. They've like a lot of L's. Like Space Jam 2 is not a shitty movie. It's a harbinger of doom for like what they think they, they can get away with with their IP. I saw a clip today of Zack Snyder talking on the Joe Rogan podcast. Don't, don't, it, I don't, I don't it, want. It was, no, it was Zack Snyder saying, yeah, I like uh, how we can play around with, uh, I forgot what he said. We can play around with, with stuff in the Star Wars universe and do whatever we want with it. Like, I remember watching the original Star Wars and when Luke enters the cantina and the walrus man approaches him, like, how do we know that that wasn't sexual? <laughs> and it's like, what? Excuse me, what the fuck do you mean? He's like, how do you know that the walrus man doesn't want to fuck Luke? <laughs> well, he didn't say that, but he did right. say that. How do we know that wasn't that interaction yeah. wasn't sexual? He's like, now we can play with that and we can we can make it sexual. <laughs> He's talking about how Rebel Moon is like a rated R Star yeah, Wars movie. Yeah, that that pot like I the clips from that like. That literally hit me in the head. I was I was watching it. I was watching the clip, and then he goes, "How do we know that interaction wasn't sexual?" I was like, <laughs> "I I had a stroke. I choked up." Like that that podcast hurt my brain on <laughs> so many levels. So like, it, I don't understand how he is able to make movies. I me neither. Like, who's giving him the money to to do this stuff? It, it be, like, I mean, they're making money, right? No, the, the movies aren't making money. No, well, I don't know because Rebel Moon. Apparently, more people saw Rebel Moon than Barbie. Oh, according to him. According to him. Yeah, yeah. So, oh God, I, it's like Trump saying, oh, "Everybody's was, coming to my yeah. my 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 rally." Everybody's yeah, biggest there's rallies. So many people in my rally. Oh my God! It's like it, nothing proved my theory more. Like he he doesn't he, he only focuses on the visual aesthetic and can't see past that to the actual text. His whole explanation why like why Batman kills I did like, see that too. He said that Batman has to kill to stay relevant or something. It's yeah. It's this a that's dumb. B uh, clearly he like he only looked at the pictures in Dark Knight Returns because if he read the fucking book, it's very clear that he does not kill that mutant. The only reason why you know the police actually go after him towards the end is because they think he killed the Joker. Mm -hmm. So that it's made a very wait. Clear, does he not kill in the Dark Knight Returns? He doesn't kill in the Dark Knight oh, Returns. I thought he did. In the he Dark Knight he Returns. gets close. He threatens. He uses a gun a couple of times, but he never That's actually. The thing. That's he never the rule actually, that he breaks. He never actually kills anybody. Because Batman's got the two rules. Yeah, and with, without those two rules, he's just a fucking guy. Yeah, and, and then at the end of the book, 
when after the Joker is you know dead and he's about to reclaim Gotham, he breaks the gun in half and he makes it explicitly clear, this is the weapon of the enemy. We will not use this. Mm-hmm. So, can, I don't know if can Zack Snyder read. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. So maybe we shouldn't make fun of he him. He plays a lot of Fortnite, apparently. You don't need to read to play Fortnite. No, you don't. Yeah. You definitely don't. No. I didn't watch the whole podcast, but I no, saw a couple neither. of clips. No, me neither. I honestly could not. I couldn't sit through the five-minute clips that people keep sending me. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, what are we doing here? Warner Brothers plans no, to Warner potentially Brothers. pull Adult Swim games from Steam and PlayStation Store was first reported uh, by developer Owen Reedy, who released puzzle adventure games, small radios, big televisions through the label in 2016. Reedy said on Twitter that the game was being retired, quote unquote, by Epic Game by Adult Swim Games. Um, he responded to the company's decision by making the PC version available to download for free from the studio's website. Uh, Polygon reached out to other developers who had worked with Adult Swim Games as publisher. Two studios responded to say that they'd received similar warnings from Warner Brothers Discovery, but they are still in the dark about what it means for their games. The uh, developer, Michael uh, Moriari, uh, who developed uh, Sound Dodger Plus through Adult Swim Games in 2013, told Polygon, who received the warning from Warner Brothers Discovery earlier this week, uh, about his game uh, could be removed from Steam within the next 60 days. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're delisting it or deleting it, uh, Moriari told Polygon in an email. I pleaded with the rep to transfer ownership to my company as I still retain all IP and game rights. I sent him a link to Steam's transfer page and explained clearly uh, that it takes literally three clicks to transfer ownership to me. He rejected my request. That's ridiculous. Uh, It was said that Warner Brothers Discovery representative said the decision to not transfer ownership back to its developer stems from logistical and resource constraints and the limited capacity of our team. One developer told Polygon um, that the current Adult Swim Games team consists of a skeleton crew. Uh, Molinari expressed frustration with Warner Brothers' plans to remove his game and others uh, would lead to over a decade of downloads, community guides, reviews, and patch notes suddenly vanishing. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery informs Molinari um, that he is he's allowed to republish uh, Sound Dodger Plus on Steam, but that option presents its own issues. Doing so would erase all of the wish lists, uh, reviews, community guides, and forum discussions, along with not allowing new or uh, new or old owners of the game to compare achievements and trading cards. The other legal requirements for republishing the game um, is to remove any and all mention of Adult Swim games. Uh, Molinari asked for clarification and even uh, wants the credit sequences altered to remove the names of Adult Swim Games team. Um, he's a huge supporter of game preservation, and this is a direct blow uh, to properly crediting people that worked on the game. Yeah. So I got to be honest, a lot of the Adult Swim games that they're delisting, never heard of them. Before. Right. Well, one of them is a recent backlog game. It's Duck Game. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Duck Game is being delisted? Yeah, Duck, Duck Game's one of the games. Is there a list? Yeah. Give me, give me his list. I mean, you just go to like Adult, adult Wait, Swim games. all game? of the Adult Swim games? I thought it was just some of the Adult Swim games. I mean, it sounds like it's all of them. I thought it was just us. I mean, there's not a lot of Adult Swim games on Steam. 18 more games could be affected. Okay, yeah. so right now it's not all of them. Right. But right. It, this, were, this article is this worried that is, it could be all of this them. This article is highlighting a few, a few specific ones, like small radios, uh, television, sound dodger. Uh, there was one other one, Fist Puncher. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it could be Duck Game. It could be Surgeon Simulator. It could be all of them. Well, no, the, the, knowing the, Warner Brothers, it probably will be all of them. The th- <coughs> I, I'm thinking they're going for the ones that aren't selling much, you know? And, and, and things like Duck Game, they'd probably want to keep around because it's making at least a marginal amount of money i don't know man i mean th- this company has shown clearly that it doesn't care about that it will purge its archives of anything and everything at the whim of some nutcase who has no respect for you know this the studio he runs all to try and like you know try to save a penny or two somewhere yeah I, look it's not looking good for adult swim yeah games, but Right now, the only ones that are in dire uh, uh, 
the, the only ones that are looking like they're going to be shut down are the ones that were mentioned in the article. Um, but if you want Duck Game, fucking go buy it because yeah. you might not be able to buy it soon. Um, hey, Eileen, thank you for the $2. Y'all are awesome. Love the pod. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Surgeon Simulator was massive. Yes. Yeah, like that's a game I don't think that it would be fucking crazy if they just delete that. I, I, I dude, I would not put it past them. They really should just transfer the ownership. There's no yeah. reason not to do that. All right, Spider Man 2 update mistakenly includes Death Only Menu. I, remember, <laughs> I saw this. Yeah. I saw a tweet about this. Uh, PlayStation 2 owners quickly discovered that version 1.002.000 of Spider Man 2 includes a developer only debug menu that players can access with a few button presses. That menu lets players quickly skip around the game's chapters, turn on cheats, and view performance details like frame rate and dynamic resolution settings. It also reportedly gives players insight into possible DLC for Spider Man 2. People have discovered a menu that shows chapters related uh, to new missions that appear to. Feature Spider-Man's longtime nemesis, the Beetle. Uh, those details were previously data mined and indicated that the Beetle might be the Janice Lincoln version, daughter of Tombstone, uh, who made her Marvel Comics debut in 2010. Insomniac acknowledged the unintended inclusion of the debug menu uh, in Spider-Man 2's new patch, uh, and writing on Twitter that it plans uh, to hotfix the issue. It also cautioned players against using it, saying that doing so could interfere with game saves. Ooh, that'd be bad. The slip-up is unfortunate oversight in what was otherwise a major and long-awaited update for fans of Insomniac Spider-Man games. It also It's also another dose of bad news for the PlayStation-owned studio, which was recently hit with layoffs and missed cutback all uh, throughout Sony Interactive Entertainment and was the victim of a major data breach in December, um, which had a devastating impact on employees and spoiled the studio's upcoming plans. I saw a leak about a multiplayer Spider-Man game. They had a trailer. Yes, I saw parts of that. I saw the trailer for the yeah. multiplayer Spider-Man game. It looked like uh, just Spider-Man. So but, but with more Spider-Mans. Yeah, where yeah. you could play for a team of four. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. But they uh, decided no. Yeah, I think I think that's the best, honestly. That was, I think that would be a cool DLC. That'd be a cool, like, uh, Miles Morales uh, like, like yeah. type, uh, like, in-between game. Yeah. All right. Uh... But they canceled it, supposedly. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo won't say who developed Princess Peach Showtime. I saw a tweet that said who did Princess Peach Showtime. Yeah. Uh, data miners have apparently uncovered the developer behind Princess Peach that's, Showtime. That's the one. Even as Nintendo continues its very strange pattern of refusing to announce who's behind its games ahead of launch. The development team will be credited in the game credits, Nintendo tells Eurogamer. That statement comes after players data mined the recent Princess Peace Showtime demo to uncover hints that it might be developed by Good Feel. Uh, that's an independent Japanese studio that's worked with Nintendo on games like Kirby's Epic Yarn and Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, if Good Feel is truly the studio behind Princess Peace Showtime, why is Nintendo actively choosing to withhold that information from the world? Kirby's Epic Yarn is a well-loved Wii classic, while Yoshi's Crafted World got more muted reception, its reputation is still decent. Plus, you'd think the simple fact that Nintendo chose the studio as a developer partner uh, would be a strong indication of the game's uh, of its game-making chops. Nintendo regularly partners with third-party studios on all but its biggest names, with notable examples including Intelligent Systems and HAL Laboratories, which are both largely responsible for some of the company's biggest franchises. Yet in recent years, Nintendo has been reluctant to offer pre-release credit to its partners. This has become a notable talking point last year when fans started to wonder who was working on the Super Mario RPG remake. Uh, it was the reimagining turned out to be excellent. Uh, check out the review and whatnot. Uh, and while and little wonder since uh, it was not excellent. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. It was built at uh, Art Piazza, a Japanese studio primarily known for terrific remakes and remasters of the Dragon Quest series. Obviously, Nintendo is free to reveal as much or as little about its games as it wants to pre-release, but this feels like the sort of information that is typically uh, just provided in press release the instant a game is announced. You'd think that the developer behind the game would also want to be recognized as the people who are actually making it. Uh, you don't want to wait until the end credits of a movie to see it was uh, made by a director after all. So on screen right now, I have the developer's last game that they made, which yeah. was uh, uh, this uh, last year. Uh, 
It is Otogi Katsugeki Mama Mameda no Bakeru. Oracle Saitaru no Sainan. You get all that? Yes. That w that's all the name of the game. <laughs> it actually kind of looks like the last level in the Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Uh, it looks cool. Yeah. The, the developer is Good Feel, uh, or in Japanese, Gudo Firu. <laughs> Uh, they haven't made much recently. That was the last game they made. Before that was 2019. They made some games. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World, one of them. Oh, and Epic Yard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but like they have a relationship with Nintendo. They made games for Nintendo. The question is, why is Nintendo not being forthcoming with? They're always like this. It's so annoying. It's very weird. It's weird. Like even after the game is released, like yeah. like you know when when they have like award ceremonies, the developer's not allowed to get the award. Nintendo has to. Get yeah, the award. it's just so strange, and it's so like, you know, it's it's anti-employee in a way. Yeah. Like, I, I get it. You want the you want the illusion that like Nintendo is one bit is one thing. Like mm -hmm. Nintendo is one entity that like puts out these uh, games and stuff. But that leads to like resentment and hostility, you know, and, and sooner or later people are going to like leave and form their own studio. This is, I, I probably talked about this before. That's what happened with, you know, Marvel in the early 90s. A bunch of people got fed up with Marvel taking credit and pretending that Marvel creates everything and they left and they formed Image Comics. Yeah. So, and, the, and Image Comics is like the third biggest publisher in the country. So, I, it could be a very Japanese thing. Like they're very, uh, uh, communal they like you know like no they don't want to take ownership oh you know they're all working together for the same like uh cause or whatnot i guess but like nintendo still has like individual teams not that i'm not saying it should be that right way. saying that they have a very uh antiquated way of of doing things yeah but like again by the same token they have like internal teams there like like known teams like what are, what are they uh, I can't even name. Next level games, uh, f entertainment planning and development, platform technology development. Although, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like they've consolidated a lot of them down. Mm -hmm. Like they they're not like individually their own things. It's all like yeah, they merely made it one team. Th this could also just be a way of uh, curbing um, leaks. They, they they don't want to yeah. make things known too much. They don't want to give people too much information because then if they maybe want to know more about Princess Peach Showtime, they will you know attack that mm -hmm. one specific developer. Yeah. Uh. So I understand a little bit why they wouldn't want people to know until the game's like yeah. out. But it's the fact that when the game does come out, they still don't uh give the developer enough credit. They yeah. still kind of treat it like it's the Nintendo conglomerate. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, oh, fun news. Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama, uh, has passed away. Yes. Akira this happened while I was streaming and people were going in. It was one of those things that's such a big deal that people were coming into my chat and telling me to talk about it. And I was like, what do you want me to say? But yeah. I, I, no I, forgot what what I, was, I forgot what I was watching with my wife, but like, I was not paying attention. I was just like on my phone, like looking at all the tweets. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Um, but yeah, Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball franchise and legendary manga artist in general, has died at the age of 68. The news was announced by his production office, Bird Studio, on social media. Toriyama died March 1st of a su of subdural hematoma, a blood clot in his brain. A small funeral for his family uh, has already taken place. Oh, so this, hap this, this happened, happened way before they announced it. Yeah. Uh, it is our deep regret that he has uh, still had several works in the middle of creation with great enthusiasm, the official statement notes. Also, we would have uh, many more things to achieve. However, he has left many manga titles and works of art to the world. Uh, we hope that Akira Toriyama's unique world of, crea of creation continues to be loved by everyone for a long time to come. Toriyama's success in manga led him to become well-known and his art style quickly became one of the most recognizable in 1980s Japan. That led to offers to work on video games. The result is a towering video game legacy. The greatest gaming impact was actually Toriyama's first brush with the medium where he provided character designs to 1986's Dragon's Quest. In almost four decades since, Toriyama's art style has become the hallmark of the series, with him directly working on most of the many entries and spinoffs. 
1995, Dragon Quest creator um, Yoji, Ho Yoji Hori uh, was set to partner with Final Fantasy's Hir uh, Hirobu Sakaguchi on a new game, and Toriyama was invited to design its characters and much of its world. That game became Chrono Trigger, regarded as one of the finest examples of its genre and an all-time great. Sakaguchi then became Toriyama's second most common gaming collaborator outside the Dragon Quest and Dragon Ball franchises. He contributed art to Square Enix's Tobo fighting games on PS1 and Sakaguchi's first game outside of Square, Blue Dragon. In 2021, he contributed uh, to Sakaguchi's most recent title, uh, Fantasian. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess, did Dragon Ball kind of... Uh... Uh, spearhead the art style for anime from then on because like a lot of anime just looks like Dragon Ball. I think it was like a major like influence on like a lot of anime going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I didn't watch a lot of Dragon Ball. Uh, we watched. Uh, the... I think we watched a fair share of Dragon Frieza and Cell Saga. Yeah, that was it. Pretty much. Yeah, but I, I was as I was trying to explain to my wife like when this happened, I'm like, you have to understand something like. No, we were not like the biggest Dragon Ball fans, but like Dragon Ball Z at that time period was like the biggest thing on yeah. like in our like community. It was like the 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 teenage boy mindset. Like when Dragon Ball hit, like you could tell like this was different and this was unique. It was nothing like anything else that was happening on any of the other animated shows we were watching. I wanted to draw all of the characters. Yeah. I was, I, was, it, it had, uh, I have, I have notebooks of drawing of all of the, all of the guys. Yeah, For some it, reason, like the, the art was so cool. I, yeah. I, I wanted to, it had, to make it had a cr it. incredible art design. It had great characters. It had incredible action sequences. Yeah. It had long form storytelling where every episode led into the next one. It was a drama. Yeah. And kids <laughs> cartoons didn't do that. Yeah, so it was this wholly like original thing that, you know, even though like we're not the biggest Dragon Ball fans, like I I like Dragon Ball, I like Dragon Ball Z, like, and I I still like tr keep up with it as much as I can because it's, it's such a good work of art. It and like putting it on Toonami, it it made it. Uh, this is what made. Uh, Japanese cartoons popular in yeah. America was Dragon Ball, and then yeah. after that, they're like, "Oh, we could do this again with other yeah. anime," and then they tried with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, um, and then we got Pokemon and yeah, and Digimon and all that yeah. stuff, and then it just exploded from there. Um, so it's this this guy you can thank for yeah. a lot of the Japanese media that we consume here in America. Yeah. Um, so. So R.I.P. the yeah. goat. Thank you, Kyle in the thank you, says. Toriyama San, for all that you've done. You were an incredible, incredible force of nature. Dragon Ball was in a was a force of nature. Yeah. Sorry that the American live action film was hot garbage. I'm sure he had a a, a fun time with that. <laughs> yeah. One. Uh, next we got uh, Multiverses is back apparently. <laughs> Somehow Multiverses has returned. Um, after its open beta was temporarily halted last summer, Multiverse is the platform fighter starring Bugs Bunny, Harley Quinn, and more familiar faces from Warner Brothers and DC Comics is on its way back. WB and Player First Games have announced that the game will launch uh, in full on May 28th. A new developer update uh, video was released by Player First today, hosted by the studio's director and co-founder, uh, Tony Huynh. Um, which confirmed the release date. It also revealed concept art for new stages, enhanced visuals, improved performance thanks to the move to Unreal 5, and mentions uh, mentions of new personalities, new netcode, new PvE mode, though no uh, specifics were confirmed. Multiverses was originally announced November 2021 with the first open beta session uh, beginning in July 2022. Uh, it became both the most successful Warner Brothers game and the most successful fighting game on Steam as it reached 10 million players in August 2022 and 20 million the following month. The beta remained open for multiple seasons with multiple new characters, stages, and customization options added via both free and paid updates until June 2023 when Player First announced that the beta would shut down to prepare for the full launch in early 2024. Well, yeah. And Multiverses launches May 28th for Xbox, uh, PlayStation, and PC. I don't know if that was the right move. No. Because like, it made me think the game came out and just people stopped playing it. 
like that's what's confused me. Like they made it clear it was a beta. Yeah. But like usually immediately following the beta is the, the game. Comes yeah. Out. Or like yeah, especially then the beta like, and then the game comes out. If it had paid DLC people are giving money for uh to you for and you shut the whole thing down yeah it's like bizarre. there was no clear indication like if and when this game was coming back yeah this was uh very bizarre also so i heard it was better than uh nicktoons but i've heard this was good yeah yeah but it can't be that good it can't <laughs> like obviously it's not going to be smash brothers that's the thing yeah is that it's trying to be smash brothers and you just can't you just no, can't you can't, you can't be smash brothers but like it can do something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's room for Smash Brothers like games, but yeah. uh it's just it you're not gonna you're not gonna reach all the way to Smash yeah. Brothers status. And when you have IPs like, you know, this popular, uh you gotta make a pretty damn good game. You can't just uh-huh. have like Brawlhalla yeah. but with with Batman in it. Yeah. Um because you're working with big time IPs. Yeah. Uh so I don't know, maybe they fixed a lot of stuff in it, but uh yeah. Uh, I I just think it's weird to have it come out and then pull it away and yeah. have it come out again. It's weird. So, but now I legitimately com- thought this was the second game. No, it's it's the act it's the actual game. It's back. That's crazy. But I mean, here's hoping it has an audience because if it doesn't, Warner Brothers will just pull it again. Last news. Uh, exclusivity is the Achilles heel of huge blockbusters says PlayStation executive. Oh, we love when PlayStation yeah. executives. Uh, there's a huge amount of chatter about the exclusivity in the aftermath of Microsoft's decision to port titles to PlayStation and choppy waters of the industry at large. This year alone, has seen thousands of game developers laid off as the industry attempts to course correct. Um, but as budgets for temple titles like Spider-Man 2 soar, uh, many are beginning to question whether the traditional exclusivity paradigm um, is even feasible anymore is a topic PlayStation's well-liked ex-executive Sean Layton has touched upon in a huge interview with Game Beat, uh, and he believes uh, sticking to a single format may be the Achilles heel of the industry um, and its most expensive releases. When your game, when you, your costs for a game exceed two hundred million dollars, exclusivity is your Achilles heel. He explained it reduces your addressable market. Uh, particularly when you're in the world of live service gaming or free to play, another platform is just another way to open the funnel, getting more people in in a free to play world. As we know, 95% of those people will never spend a nickel. The business is all about conversion. You have to improve your odds by cracking the funnel open. Layden pointed to recent success of hell divers two, which is a PlayStation published game that released day and date on both PS5 and PC, a relatively new approach for Sony, uh, which has proven wildly successful. Of course, Helldivers 2 is a live service game, so what does that mean for the platform holders of bread and butter single player titles? If you're spending $250 million, you want to be able to sell your game to as many people as possible, even if it's just uh, 10 cents more, uh, 10% more, he pointed out. The global install base for consoles, if you go back to the PS1 and everything else stacked up there, wherever, uh, Wherever in time you look at, uh, the cumulative consoles out there never gets over 250 million. If it, it just doesn't, the dollars have gone up over time. But I look at that and see that we're just making more money from the same people. Layden believes the industry needs to expand beyond its current market. We're not going. We're not doing enough to get uh, heretofore non-console people into console gaming. He noted. We're not going to attract them by going more. Uh, we're not going to attract them by doing more of the shit we're doing now. If 95% of the world doesn't want Call of Duty, uh, Fortnite, and Grand Theft Auto, is the industry just going to make more Call of Duty, Fortnite, and Grand Theft Auto? It's not going to get. And it's not going to get you anybody else. I I appreciate that approach. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the candor mm-hmm. and like the the bluntness of it. I mean, he's an ex-executive at Sony. He doesn't work there anymore, so he can kind of be a little more free. But he's right. Yeah, I don't like the idea of nickel and diming uh, people who, no. who are buying like a single-player game. But uh, I appreciate uh, how they see the success in something like Helldivers 2. Well, he's an ex-executive, so yeah. this doesn't even fucking mean anything. But they see the success of Helldivers 2, and they want to maybe in the future release more games on PC and uh, yeah. have more of a shotgun approach and let other... Uh, consoles uh, have have the the games i i forgot who was talking about this or where i saw this 
But, um, you know, like the console, if you look at games as a whole, like the, like the games industry as a whole, yeah. uh, consoles is a small percentage of that. Yeah. So even PlayStation releasing stuff as exclusive, uh, it could be shooting them in the foot because they could have a big game that nobody's going to play because they don't have PlayStations and don't want to get a PlayStation. Yeah. So like, this is part of why I think, uh, streaming is going to end up happening for for people in the future yeah uh imagine you don't have any consoles at all but you see hell divers imagine if you will that hell divers is a playstation exclusive yeah and you don't have a console at all you don't even have a computer yeah uh and you see hell divers and you're like i want to play hell i want to give this hell divers a yeah. shot your options in the future will be streaming it and playing it on your phone or playing it on your tablet or so or or a Chromebook or or, or a laptop that's not very powerful. Yeah, and that'll be a lot of people's entryway into gaming. So, uh, their mission is to not only appeal to the people who are already playing their games, but appeal to the people who uh are not playing their games. Here he says the ninety five percent of the world that doesn't play Call yeah. of Duty Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto. So, uh, yeah, he's right. Make something that's not fucking Call of Duty, Fortnite, or Grand Theft Auto for those guys. Yeah, and also too, like keep budgets in check. <laughs> yeah, like, that if, too. If you're gonna you don't spend, have to spend two hundred million. If you're gonna it. spend that much money, then like you really need to, like, think about putting your games elsewhere. Yeah. Or like lower the budget so that you can make the money back. Yeah. That sounds awful. Play via streaming. It's not that bad. For us, and we, I care a lot about input lag, and honestly, yeah. it's really not bad at all. And if that's your only option, I think it's extremely convenient. Mm. Uh, anyway, that's all the news, I think. Yes. I think we, we've done So it. we can do the thing. Oh, yeah, shit. Quit of the week, piss. quit of the week, quit of the ah, week. Ah, piss. Did you not pick a new one? No, I did. Okay. Oh, I definitely did. <laughs> This is a quote tweet. It is, in 1973, Amar Bharati lifted his right hand in the air and has held it up for at least 50 years. That's incredible. Yeah. And the quote tweet says, easy prey for the tickle monster. <laughs> tickle, tickle. Uh, All right. We'll talk to you guys real quick. Yes. Let's start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. A Wolf Den a podcast. podcast. We got Caleb Fox, who says, I'm too lazy to back up my ROMs, but the story of Will pirating Michael Bay's TMNT <laughs> has convinced me to back up my DVDs instead of downloading them. I mean, if you have the DVDs, yeah, just back them up. I mean, it's going to take some time, but yeah. Um, uh, and also, never pirate Michael Bay's TMNT. This is completely unrelated, but Surf, did you know that Surfshark VPN can help uh, encrypt your data so that nobody on your or off your network can see what you're doing? Yeah, I, I learned about that That's after. That's not, not at all related to what we were talking no, about. No, not at all. No, it's complete no, as Yes. I mean, after that incident, I did invest in a VPN that can make sure that my ISP doesn't know what what's tracking me. Is that related at all? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we used to be sponsored by a different VPN yeah, it's not that VPN oh my god what? Uh, what VPN you could say it it doesn't matter the PIA I use PIA what is that Private oh, Internet Access. Pro oh yeah. that's just the whole yeah. thing oh but that doesn't come with uh, antivirus no, or, or uh, <laughs> fucking some other bullshit I can't think no, of right now no it's not as good as Surfshark <laughs> VPN um uh, Madras Production says commenting because backlog, backlog, backlog. But he put too many backlogs. It's only backlog, four backlogs, backlog, dude. Backlog, backlog. Yeah, it's only four. All right, he's just excited. All right, we're, we're I understand. Yeah. Also, the new concept. Yeah. Right? Uh, Eags says if Nintendo doesn't want to deal with emulation, they may want to consider Xbox's backwards compatibility model. Otherwise, emulation isn't going away. A Switch with an extra DS cartridge slot would be pretty cool. I think that's a big problem because, like, Nintendo has all these different weird cart uh, cartridge formats that just aren't gonna like you. You can't make one system that has like a cartridge slot for everything. That's just not feasible. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
unless you make the the retron five but i think people finally agree that the system's not that good um digital distribution is the way to go for like nintendo's back catalog the problem is getting your digital purchases to transfer from one console to the next the things we bought on the wii back in the day cannot transfer over to the switch and that's a failing on nintendo's part yeah and that's their account system thing that they want to yeah. fix and that's step one yeah but uh again i'm working on a video about uh yeah uh games preservation and like the legality of all of this and stuff yeah. and, and what would be just extremely helpful is having some sort of rules that allow us to fuck with our old stuff so that yeah. we can get it working on modern hardware because right yeah. now nintendo and other big companies are trying everything in their power to prevent us from doing that and part of what's working for them is hiding behind the guise of piracy being yeah like everybody's pirating this stuff but we're only pirating this stuff yeah because it's the only way to get this shit to work on modern hardware or the easiest way at least i want to i didn't put it in the keep because like i don't know there's a, like a lot going on with it i don't think all of it is like true but allegedly jim ryan who's like leaving sony like as the head of sony uh, now that he's leaving, like Sony is like in contact with like PlayStation emulator developers to bring PS1 and PS2 develop uh, emulation to the PS5. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. That's not how that's gonna work. You know, they're Sony's gonna use their own internal team. Oh, it's gonna to be do some that. weird stuff. Yeah. yeah, but that brings some. Uh, that yeah, brings some legitimacy. To, yeah, to the, the fact that like they're the ones who 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 lost the emulator lawsuit back yeah. in the day so now they're like you know like okay we'll we'll if we can't beat them join them but also too like you can play ps1 and ps2 games on your ps5 you have to pay 150 dollars a year for it with the playstation premium mm -hmm. but like it's possible i just want to be able to take my ps2 games like psyops the mind conspiracy um and put it in my <laughs> and put it in my playstation 5 and play the game i don't want to have to like dig out my playstation 2 yeah there's a there's a lot of ways they can make yeah this stuff way easier um we got jace who says hey will what is your favorite run in comics i just bought the first two ultimate spider-man omnibuses after reading the entire series digitally and i am planning to reread it I feel the whole series has a mostly solid story throughout and has some cool changes from the mainline universe. The only other comic book run I think might contest it is the whole Incredible series. Invincible. Invincible. The whole Invincible. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to pinpoint one particular run that like, I would say is my favorite. I would say, like, I really like Tom King and his bat. I like his Batman run a lot. I think people who are hate it are just lonely. Um, his Wonder Woman run currently is excellent. I really liked, um, what's his name? I don't remember. Oh, Greg Rucka had an excellent run on the Punisher a couple years ago. It was short, but it was awesome. Uh, Mark Wade's Daredevil is probably the best Daredevil of the 21st century. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of really good runs out there that like, you could throw your hat in. Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Matt Fraction's uh, Hawkeye. Uh, Scott Snyder's Hush. No, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Batman in general. Who did Hush? Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb's yeah. Hush. Uh, the Long Halloween. Long Halloween. That. That also Jeff Loeb. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. Great stuff. Um, PMMC Rob says, Rockstar learning a Rockstar learning absolutely nothing from the past couple of years, forcing an RTO and resuming crunch culture all at once, uh, or forcing a return to office. Yeah. Uh, hope this drives employees to leave. Honestly, yeah. Rockstar was never really like known for being like good about you know develop <laughs> developer um well being, like uh Red Dead Redemption One famously like the wives of a lot of the rockstar developers wrote an open letter to rockstar saying like send our husbands home and then like um was la noir had a similar problem and the guy running that team was apparently a tyrant yeah so it like this is nothing new for rockstar it's just it's disappointed that like it's still like this i'd like to think that the games industry is is wising up to crunch and stuff like that uh, yeah um but you, you know i, yeah, I think no, that I, I think that uh, just as as a whole, companies are uh, 
getting really uh they're getting away with a lot lately. yeah but i think you know we're seeing a lot of unionization happening yeah we need more of that shit. yeah uh earlier in the chat now we're in the chat earlier yes. in the chat uh somebody where 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 Somebody sent me, oh, Garrison sent me uh, this link to this thing. Uh, what is it? It's a touch laminated AMOLED screen for a Game Boy? Okay. Why do we need a touch screen? We don't. Okay, it's only for like the OSD stuff. Um, ah. Just that it's OLED. Is that why this is notable? Actually, this is an LCD. Wait. This is LC. I don't know. Whatever. This is ammo. I don't know. It's just very confusing. No. Uh, okay. I need uh, I, this. I how could this be better than the the, than the, the main thing? Looks like it's, it's a touch screen, which yeah, I so don't weird. think that's that's gonna make the game worse. <laughs> it it's just for the on screen display. Yeah. There's no okay reason to to have a touch. Screen. It's sixteen times scaling. Oh. Oh. Well, that's, then never mind. You don't need that many. That's too many times. Right. The analog pocket's only 10. <laughs> and that looks incredible. Yeah. How many more times could you need? Bob, what console do you plan on doing next for showing us legal emulation? Uh, this. this the Wii. That's it. Yeah, you'll get it on, on Thursday. After that. I mean, there's the Switch, but uh, that's there's a lot of gray area there because yeah. they're s selling a dumper, and uh, the selling of the dumper might be illegal. Yeah, the, the, which which is I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to it's hard to to navigate. Yeah, um, we do have some Twitch chats oh. a while ago. Uh, Edward Bova, uh, the creators of the newly released Switch emulator Suzu are taking measures to avoid any potential legal action from Nintendo, the company behind the original Switch console. Yeah, I need to look into that. Uh, yeah. But thank God. I, I, I Again, I just, I, I'm hoping that like the emulation community just takes this as a warning shot and kind of is a lot more careful going forward. Yeah. About this stuff. Yeah, th uh, this is not the end of emulation, but it's like the beginning of like, being better about like avoiding Nintendo's ire, I think. Yeah, it's definitely scary because yeah. Nintendo could just get rid of all. Oh, of them. absolutely, yeah. Um, and and it would be devastating. But uh, uh, yeah, I think as a community we can take steps to to get around it a little better. Mm -hmm. Um, Matt Vermert, thanks for the three months. Where does the time go? I look forward to the podcast as much as payday. Oh my god, that's wow. a lot. Yeah, that's crazy. Thank you. Hells Dells. Thanks for the four months. First time catching the live from Ireland. Hello from Ireland. Hello. And we had uh, Kylie in the soup, with the super chat, $2. Y'all are awesome. Love the pod. Oh, my God. Thank you, everybody. Someone is picking up Citra to continue it. That's good because Citra was the biggest yeah. disappointment to me because I actually use Citra. I don't use Yuzu that much because I have a Switch. Yeah. Did you see the leaked Spider-Man live service game trailer? Yeah, that's what we were talking about before. Yeah, we talked about it before. I think it looked cool. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how it would have worked, though. You know, like a, like a multiplayer Spider-Man game. Like a bunch of different Spider-Mans running around. I'd imagine it would just be the, the game as right. it currently is, but... I Miles guess, Morales is controlled by your friend instead I guess of like an NPC. GTA Online... But you're not committing crimes, you're stopping crimes. Yeah. Okay. Somebody said Gotham Knights. Basically Gotham Knights, but good. That's, yeah. what, that's what it said. <laughs> and then the comment under that was like, uh, oh, Gotham Knights was better than people made it out to be. No, it wasn't. 92-ish says, so Bob, what's your hot juice take on the creators of the newly released Switch emulator uh, Suzu? Warding legal action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I need to look into it more. Um... But I hope that, uh, I mean, that's great news. I think that's yeah. on, on the right track. I'd like to know what Ryu Jinx is, is doing to, to prevent that. We had an opportunity to interview those guys, and I yeah. kind of dropped the ball on it. Um, so if I update MU deck, will I lose Citra? If you have it, you will not lose it. Uh, it'll keep it there. 
Um, so uh, don't worry about that. You can continue to update Emu deck and it'll keep the one that the Citra and the Yuzu that you currently have. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, that's 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 it, guys. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den or youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put the archive version up over on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast so you can go check us out on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also on audio podcasts on any and every podcast service like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms uh woogie waters thank you for the uh, prime subscription hey bob and will good stuff as always thank, thank you, you very much mega dragon says google podcast is shutting down soon what should i use now i mean youtube youtube <laughs> yeah youtube is great for a podcast that's why google podcast is shutting down yeah. because youtube is just fine um last week we were experimenting with um Taking the podcast off of YouTube and re-uploading it after yeah. we do a live. Uh, I made the mistake of immediately privating the episode and yeah. people were pissed uh, because they were watching the podcast and then it just got <laughs> ripped from them. Uh, so, sorry, we won't do that again. Yeah. Uh, we will leave it unlisted or something. Um, that's it. That's all the news that we have. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday. Uh, I might be getting my MSI Claw on Thursday. Ooh. So uh, Thursday stream will probably be me fucking around that. Uh, Wood streaming right now. He's it looks like a like a hoodlum. <laughs> Look at him. What's he doing? Is he cold? I think he might be a little cold. Go okay. warm him up. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you later, guys. Uh, bye. Bye.